And we return back to the pleasant, happy, good, great study of Isaiah. Why Isaiah is not preaching the modern churches today? There must be something lacking in what the people want. As we open up in chapter 10, 10th book of the Bible will be 2 Samuel. I mean, God is love, but what have we been studying about the angry God, the holy God? And let's continue. Woe unto them that decree unrighteous decrees. That's the law. Wow. The lawmakers and judges. And that right grievousness which they have prescribed. Prescribe it, you know, the doctor gives you a prescription. Something you, you it's handed down to you. And there are laws throughout all history that are made against the people. Unrighteous laws. There were times that, you know, the Bible was forbidden. The Bible was chained to pulpits. You couldn't have a Bible. You were caught with a Bible, it meant death. It was death to those who printed the Bible or tried to get the Bible out. There's death to missionaries. There are death to people who try to get the gospel out. That's unrighteous decrees. Unrighteous decrees, it says that sodomites, a man and a man, can marry. Sodomites, a woman and a woman, to get married. The God said it's, un, it's unrighteous. It's an abomination. I don't care what you feel. I don't care of your opinions. It is what God says. And you'd be damn more if you stand in a pulpit and have to stand before God, the great white throne judgment. I just like it. To turn aside the needy from judgment. All right, so we go further in chapter, uh, uh, verse 1. Unrighteous decrees is to not help the needy. When they go before judgment. To get what's right. To get justice. And the law says you can. And to, to take away the right from the poor of my people. All right, this is Jewish. This is written to Jews. This is written to God's people. This is the same condemnation that is in the time of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus says, cast your burdens upon me... The burdens was what the, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes were putting on the people. Yet they were not doing it themselves. Putting rules and regulations which God never intended and God never wrote. You must wash your hands before you eat. And, you know, you can't go on a journey. You can go only so far. That's. And then Jesus turned around and said, well, didn't, you know, don't you water your ass? Don't you water the, the, your cattle? If a sheep falls into a hole, don't you, you know? How come you can do, but they can't? That widows may be their prey. Oh. Just because her husband's died, then they come in and they're vicious wolves. Listen, the law was intended for the widows and the fatherless to be taken care of. Things have changed. They have, they have stepped aside from the law. And that they may rob the fatherless. You know what this country is doing to the poor? To the fatherless? To, to the widows? Those that, you know, they're poor because not because they don't want to work. They're working. They're not getting the wages that they're supposed to. They're putting more taxation and more penalties on them. Yeah, okay, you gotta have insurance, health insurance. You gotta have car insurance. You got because you got it and you can't pay for the doctors. You're over over penalized, over taxed, over over fined. Makes you poor. And what will ye do in the day a visitation. You know, we talk about going visitation. You don't want this visitation. 
This is when God comes walking up to your door and rings the doorbell. This is reap what you sow. You don't want to take care of the people? Well, when it comes time to your need, and in the desolation, that's, that's a nice, that's without, without others, without love, without food, without something. Gone, which shall come from far. To whom will ye flee for help? Don't turn to God. You violated the law. When you rebel, you can't expect good. You're going to turn to the people? They despise you. They hate you. They're not going to help you. You didn't help them. And where will ye leave your glory? And that glory is, you know, my office. My place of employment. Where I stand. That's the glory spoken of. Yeah, you can be a ruler of a nation and the entire nation hates you. You're not much of a ruler. Where you speak about Central America and, and Mexico and the countries like that is you know, you get a guy who's in in the government authority and wakes up the next morning he could be, you know, rival in a government takeover. Because the people are rebelling against his authority. It happens all the time down down south in, in America. Uprisings. I mean, you need to please the people. You need to make them happy. Without me, God, they shall bow down under the prisoner. The prisoners are going to have more of authority than these people in authority. Prisoners, someone who's in jail, they've done a crime. You, they were probably made prisoners because they, they didn't pay your taxes. And they shall fall under the slain. Dead. What's worse than being dead? Falling under the dead. For all this, his God, anger, is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. Now, where do we find that? We found that in the last chapter three times. Four times. It's not a charm. That's four times that, that has shown up. I've got a note here. It says Isaiah 5.25, 9.12, 9.17, and 9.21. Five places. Death. If that I go back and check that five twenty five, if that's the same if that is the same what we've been reading nine and chapter ten. One, two, three, four, five times. Five in the Bible is death. Okay, now Jesus said, Woe unto them who offenses come. And I'm not quoting that verse correctly. But the principle. We're going to see someone now step up and do something for God that they shouldn't do. They're more than happy to do service to God and get in trouble. Chapter 10, verses 5 through 19, you see the Antichrist. We see Sennacherib. As a type of Antichrist. We see in Genesis 12, God said to Abraham, the father of the Jews, the foundation of the Jews, I will curse them that curse thee. Now Israel is in big trouble. 
They are sinning against God in rebellion. God has to punish his people because he loves them, Hebrews says. Now he needs someone to step up the plate and to punish Israel. Jesus said, offense has come. It has to come. Israel needs to be beaten. Somebody has to do it. Sennacherib steps up to the plate. The Antichrist will step up to the plate. Yeah, but cursed be them that curse thee. Reap what you sow. You don't mess with Israel. We'll see Sennacherib step up to the plate and say, and we'll say, hey, I want them Jews dead. Sennacherib said, what, what must I need to do? Fall down and worship me and I'll give you all the kingdom. Okay. In a moment of time. You, you know what that is. That's what Matthew 4 and Luke 4. Fall down and worship me and I'll give you the kingdom. And God turns to Satan, Job 1 and Job 2. I need Israel to be beaten. I know you'd be more than pleased to do it. <laughs> yes, all right. I got the perfect man to do it. All right, go ahead. And Satan doesn't sit around Job 1 and 2 to back talk anything like that. He turns from God's presence and Job lost everything. So, Satan, this, Lord, God, I need Israel to be punished. Oh, it's searing the rod of my God's anger. Assyrian, the Sennacherib, is a Gentile that God says is a rod. And you'll see in, uh, not John, in chapter 10, verse 15, when we get there, a rod, a staff, an axe, a saw. I, God, need a rod to bust the behind of Israel, O Assyrian. The rod of my anger. Who's the anger against? The Assyrian? No. Who's it been against? Israel. That's the loving God? Is that the God of love? I need someone to beat someone's behind. Oh, Assyrian. And Hebrew says, as a father cherishes child, so I cherish my children. Unless you be a bastard, Hebrew says. I need to chastise you. All through Proverbs you get the correction. The staff in the in their hand is my indignation. Jeremiah 50 verse 17. I, God, will send him, the Assyrian, against a hypocritical nation. That's Israel. That's not Assyria. That is Israel. Against the people of my wrath. That is the Jews. The ten chapters we've done so far. That is Israel. That is Judah. That is Jerusalem. Will I, God, give him, the Assyrian, a charge? Charge! It's an order. God is ordering Sennacherib the Assyrian to go into Israel, take the spoil. Well, you do that after war. When the battle's over, there are dead. You go up to the dead, you take off the rings, you take his wallet, you take the good stuff, you go into their empty houses and take, in loot, and to take the prey. And to tread them down like the mire of the street. Utter destruction. Desolation. The time of visitation, verse 3. 
This is not the visitation you want. The visitation, the guy that comes knocking on your door. Snacker, how you doing? I'm here about the gospel of the Lord Jesus. No, he's not. He's here for utter desolation. This is the visitation. All right, open up the door. Clap to get a sword in your chest. And he goes look around his house, see what, what he can get. The Assyrian troops. How be it he, the Assyrian, meaneth not so. Neither does his heart think so. But it is in his heart, the Assyrian, to destroy and cut off nations, not a few. What's that about? He is unaware of what God is doing to him, but he wants victory. He wants world empire. He wants domination. He will bow down before Satan to get the world. And God says, in that zeal, I'm going to use you to go after my people, and you're not even going to know it. I wonder if Adolf Hitler ever knew that he was used as a rod in God's hand to go after the anger that he had against the Jews. And Adolf Hitler wanted, just like Sennacherib, he wanted world domination. Alex the Great wanted world domination. Satan said, I'll give you the world if you fall down and worship me. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And, and God looks, okay, he did that. I can maybe use him. Nebuchadnezzar, you want to... You want kingdom and all that yes I do you want to go you want to go spank my children three times I'll do it go in there three times what happened to Babylon it was destroyed all right now this is what the Assyrian the Sennacherib is saying verse 9 God is telling you what he's thinking for he saith, this is the Assyrian are not my princes altogether kings? Revelation 17, 12. I've got rulers and authority. Is not Kano as Karkashemish? Is not Hamath as Arpid? Is not Samaria? He's going to attack Israel as Damascus. The cities that I've already attacked. The, the places I've gotten victory. As my hand, the Syrian, has formed the kingdoms. The founder, founded. As my hand has found the kingdoms. Like Genesis 10, 10, Nimrod. Founded the kingdom of idols. Uh-oh, that's not God. This is a Gentile nation coming in and bringing his gods and giving praise to his gods. And whose graven in images did excel them of Jerusalem and Samaria. Oh, wait a minute. The two capitals of the Jewish people have images and graven images. Now here comes graven images and idols against the graven images of Jerusalem and Samaria. It's a battle of the graven images. So the Romans and the Greeks get the battle of gods against gods from the Bible. Because here are gods versus gods. Shall I not, as I have done unto Samaria and her idols, so do to Jerusalem and her idols? Oh, he's not just content to go with Samaria and Israel. He's also on his way to Jerusalem. Why is God doing this to the Jews? Because of the idols. And the Assyrian, the Gentile, is proclaiming the sin of Israel. I forget the name, but in Jeremiah, the city is sacked and destroyed and all that. And the Babylonian walks up to Jeremiah and says, This is why this happened. A non-Christian, a non-people of God 
chastising, chiding, rebuking someone who is of God or someone who is a Christian. I've had that happen to me. I've had an unsaved person correct me and rebuke me. And that's, that, that's, that's shameful. Not something to feel good about. Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord has performed his whole work upon Mount Zion and on Jerusalem, destruction, the, the, the chastisement, the visitation, the desolation, the child is bad. You know when America teaches not not to punish your child by, by spanking him, you are going against the Bible, you are going against the very act of God. God spanks a nation of people and he expects you to spank your child. He says it's proper. Read me the Bible and the law where you read about prison. There isn't any. Prison is for the people who say, we're going to do it our way. Shut up, God. And then they call it correction. And anything not. I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high look. Second Kings 19.30. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He just said the Assyrians are rod of his anger against his people who are rebellion. Now I'm going to turn it on the Assyrian? God, what is your problem? What's my problem? Yes, God, why are you so mean and nasty and, and cruel, God? Because I said in Genesis 12, to Abraham, I will curse them that curse thee. The Assyrian is cursing the Jew. Yeah, but God, you asked for somebody to do it. Yeah, but Jesus said 713 years later, plus or minus, well, plus, about 740, 720 years later, he says, Woe unto them, the fences come. And the principal part, not, uh, not quoting the verse, the principal part is, don't be the offender. Sennacherib. Yeah, there's a job to be done by God to the Jews, but don't do it. Say no. Don't fall down before Satan. Give up the kingdom. It's better to serve God than serve Satan. Because Satan said, I'll give you the nations, but Satan did not tell you that God's going to whip your butt. Oh, Eve, isn't it so great for you to take that, that fruit and, oh, look at that, the knowledge, and you'll be as God. You'll know. Well, what will I know? You'll know a hospital bed. You'll know about illegal drugs. You'll have to build prisons. Oh, I forgot to tell you that, Eve. Oh, Eve, I forgot to tell you that in the very next chapter in the Bible, your son is going to kill your son. I'm sorry, Eve, I didn't tell you that. I didn't tell you, Sennacherib, that God's going to beat your butt because God said, I'm going to curse them that curse you. You know what's going to happen to the Assyrian? I mean, you know what's going to happen to Antichrist? He chastises. He is a rod in God's hand against the Jews for Jacob's trouble, and he's going to destroy the Antichrist. God needs men to do something. And there are some times that you guys say, God, I want to do what's right, what you want. It, it, it. Well, isn't that impossible for somebody who doesn't believe in God and the Bible to understand? Israel needs to be punished. But the person who's going to do it, the Bible says, you will be punished yourself. Sorry, God. I don't want to. I want blessings from you, God. And Adolf Hitler in, in the Antichrist reign, 
there are going to be people who are going to be willing to kill the Jews and turn up the Jews. And, and there are going to be some people right there. No, I'm going to help the Jews. We have a book in the Bible against the Edomites because when Nebuchadnezzar came in, they turned over the Jews that fled from Jerusalem. They, they took them captive and they turned them over to Babylon. And God says to them, Edomites, the children of Esau, I am against you because I will curse them that curse the Jews. You're to help them. Those Jews are being bad, Christian. I want you to go over there. I want you. No, no, the Bible. Uh, no, Lord. Your word says I'm to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. I am to love them. I am to do right. And anybody who goes against what the Bible says and goes against the Jews are not Bible Christians. Because the Bible says you are to pray for them, you are to love them, and you are to witness to them. And they are God's people. And I'm not going to touch them because the Bible says it still goes to today in 2015. I am going to curse them that curse you. I'm going to bless them that bless you. I want a blessing. I am not going to do anything against the Jew. No matter what he does. And if he goes to America and burns all the Bible and burns all the churches, I'm still to pray for the peace in Jerusalem and still love that Jew and witness to him. Because they're God's people. And God will say, okay, I'll have to find somebody else. Uh, I'm trying, to think, I'm trying to think of another illustration here. Somebody, John F. Kennedy was shot. Lee Harvey Oswald was more willing to hit me. Lee Harvey Oswald could have said, no, I don't want to do it. Lee Harvey Oswald has been in jail for killing the president. He didn't have to be in jail. He could have said, no, I'm not going to kill him. And somebody else could have, could have killed the president. You don't have to say yes. You can back off and say, I'm going to do the right thing. And say, well, what would God have done? He would have found somebody else. Sennacherib could say, hey, No. Somewhere, somewhere I read about those people of God that, that, that they are chosen people. And oh, I read something about, oh man, if, if you, oh man, something about Balaam and, and Balak. Oh, I read so I don't know what it is, but I'm not going to touch them. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to touch them because they're God's people. No! And God would have blessed Sennacherib and Satan would have found somebody else to bow down before him for the kingdom. So it says here, Wherefore it shall come to pass that when the Lord has performed his whole work, the destruction upon Jerusalem, the spanking upon Jerusalem, having the Jews pull their pants down and, and expose their butt and get the belt upon Mount Zion and Jerusalem, the chastisement upon the, the holy place, the holy city, where Jesus will walk and live, I will punish the fruit of the stout heart of the king of Assyria and the glory of his high look. Look who I was. I got God's people. I destroyed them. Yeah? Yeah? You think so? Buddy, you should acknowledge that you were in my hand. I was using you, but think, since you think you did it, I got to curse you. Because I told the people, I will curse them that curse you. World leaders, if you're listening to this, or you're going to be a world leader one day, let me give you a challenge. If you are ever confronted to deal with the nation of Israel, you better do it in prayer and love and kindness, and you better not do it in, in, in cursing. Because the Bible says, Cursed be him that curseth you, and blessed be him that blesseth him. You better get that. You better know that. 
Because if you do anything to those Jews, the Bible proclaims something's going to happen to you. For he saith. Now this is what the Syrian is saying again. By the strength of my hand, not God's, I, not God, have done it. And by my wisdom, not God's, for I am prudent. And I have removed the bonds of the people and have robbed their treasures. And I have put down the inhabitants like a valiant man. Man, this guy, me, 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 me. I, 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 look what I did. And it's all God. God did not get no credit. Adolf Hitler never said, listen, I am doing what I am doing to the Jews because they are rebelling against God, their God, and against the Bible, against the Word. They are rebelling and not listening to their he Holy Heavenly Father. Never gave God the credit. Nebuchadnezzar gave God credit, and then he got right. With, I believe Nebuchadnezzar got right with God, and I, I believe he may be in heaven one day. But he cursed the people. Yeah, his kingdom was, was, was gone. And my hand has found as a nest the riches of the people. And as one gathers eggs, there are left. And have I gathered all the earth, and there was none that moved the wing, or opened the mouth, or no, no one protected the chicks. I went in there and destroyed and gathered everything. Look at what I've done. No one could be a defense against me. Paragraph. Shall the axe. Go back to verse 5, the rod. Shall the axe both itself against him that hewed it thereof. Look at all the trees I cut down. Listen, you put an axe on the ground. In a forest and come back ten years not one tree will be cut down by the axe and that axe will be still laying in, in, the, in the ground the axe cuts trees but it don't cut the tree you say what are you talking about an axe needs somebody to use the axe the axe itself can do nothing all right mr. Assyrian you're the axe. Yeah, me the axe, sharp and all that. But I'm the one that used the axe. I used you to cut the trees down. God said, I am the person that used the axe. You're the axe, but I am the instrument that used. I am the action, God said. I am the verb. Excuse me, I am the noun. You are the verb, the axe. What are you boasting? Or shall the saw... Go back to the verse 5, the rod. And saw, magnify itself against him that shaken it. In. Put a saw on a carpenter's bench with all the wood drawn out, laying out what needs to be cut. Come back 10 years and not one of those pieces of, of wood will be cut. The saw needs somebody to work. The saw is the Assyrian. The person using the saw or using the axe is God. But the Assyrian is saying, I am an instrument without nobody. I am doing the work that I can't do. He is a tool in God's hand. The work is by God. Next. As if the rod... Verse 5, the rod, should shake itself against them that lift it up. You put a rod down, it, it ain't going to do nothing. Or as if the staff 
you know, that, that's the a cane should lift up itself as it were no wood. These items that we see in verse 15 are items that need to be held and used by somebody else. They can't speak. You can't go into a mechanic's toolbox and find a brand new socket wrench and say, well, look at all the nuts I've undone and never been held. That wrench needs to be held in the mechanic's hand to be used. A vacuum cleaner in the corner of a room that's never been touched can't say it vacuumed the floor. Unless the person came over, held the handle, turned it on, and used it. So now that the series, he's saying, I've done all this all by myself. And God said, you're right. You're as good as an electric drill that's not plugged in. That would be like taking a one cell phone and going in a time machine and bringing it back to 1837 and handing it to somebody. What's that going to do? Therefore shall the Lord, capital L, the Lord of hosts, send among his God fat ones leanness. Second Kings 19. And under his God's glory shall he, God, shall kindle a burning like the burning of He's going to whip the Assyrian's butt. Why? Because he whipped Israel's butt. How could he have been saved? By giving God the glory, like Nebuchadnezzar ended up doing. Every time Nebuchadnezzar worshipped God, he got his butt in trouble. Probably one day he came to the realization, I've had it. I'm just going to worship the God, the God of the Bible, and the God of the Hebrews. And he got right. Mr. Assyria needs to step back and say, ooh, ooh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. It wasn't me. It was, it was the God of the Hebrews that had me do all this. I'm sorry. It was, it was God. Like that guy that walked up to Jeremiah. This is why this happened. Sennacherib the Assyrian would have a different story written in the Bible. Now there would be a punishment. But had he given God the glory and given God right and as an aid to the Jews for correction. But he's going in there. He's just, he wants world denomination and he wants... He wants to conquer. He will, he'll destroy anybody and everybody and give himself the glory. And you never find pride with, with, with God. I think, it, I think it's an abomination for any Christian to say pride or proud. I think the word for a Christian would be well done. The light of Israel shall be for a fire, and his holy one for a flame, and it shall burn and devour his thorns, curse, his buyers in one day. Hebrews 6, 4, Ezekiel 20, verse 46, and we just read that a couple chapters ago. You know what God does with unfruitfulness? He burns it. What is the chaff among the wheat? And uh, there was one that uh, the man that planted, uh, the good man went and planted uh, uh, fruit in the, in the field, and along came the enemy and planted tares. And the tares were gathered up and burned. Thorns and, and, and briars are cursed. They are unfruitful. They are unwanted. They are unneeded. They, they burn. The Antichrist will burn. He will burn in the lake of fire for all eternity. Tanaka did not have to. And he didn't get right. 
So he's burning in hell to today. Imagine, let's see, today says 2015, mine says 713. I don't know, let's see, uh, this, this rough, imagine 2,700 years already in hell. You don't mess with the Jews. And if you do, you better repent and get right. And shall consume the glory of his forest and of his fruitful field, both soul and body. But we're just talking about thorns and briars. We're talking about forests. Yeah, but it's an illustration of the soul and body. People are liking the trees in the Bible. There's a blind man that Jesus comes to him and he does something to his eyes. He says, I see men as trees walking. In the book of Judges, uh, the thing is a blimmin' like, there's a parable told, and they went to the trees of the forest, and they're likened to the city. The people, you know, make us king, make him king. And they shall be as when a standard bearer fainted. That's the guy that holds the, the flag. In battle, fainteth. He's too tired. Maybe he's died. And the flag falls to the ground. The rest of the trees of his forest shall be few. Alright. They're not going to be completely consumed. That a child may write them. The number is going to be so small. That a little child is going to be able to write down a piece of paper. How many trees. What. That a child. I mean. How much can a child write. How much can a child count. Doesn't tell us the age. Thousand? How high can it tell? A hundred? It's going to be a remnant. You don't mess with God's people. And too many people and nations are going to find out. In Genesis 12, I will curse them that curse thee, holds true probably for all eternity. They are God's people. And when God calls you to do something to those Jews, even though they deserve it, even though they are guilty, You need to back off. You need to say, God, nope, I don't want to do it. How far do you take that? I mean, what, what if you're a judge and you got a Jewish person standing in your courtroom is guilty and the sentence is jail or the sentence is the capital punishment? Now, he's guilty of the law, but... They are God's people. They're not under the law. They are to be under the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. If I were to be a judge and I had that thing right there, and you want to do right by the law of your country, and you want to do right by God's people, I just pray and say, Lord, you know what? The law states that this person needs to be sentenced. Your word says that he is guilty and he needs to be guilty of sentence. I love you, Lord. I want to do right. I want to pray for the soul of this person. I can give him a gospel track about the Lord Jesus Christ. And Lord God, please show me mercy and grace as I apply what needs to be applied. Well, I shouldn't want to go and do what Sennacherib and the Syrian did. Look at what I did. I put a Jew, I put 12 Jews in jail this week. I put 12, you know, I find over a thousand dollars worth of Jewish felony. Ha, and I won't be that big. You could turn around to say, God, okay, God, 
Hey, I understand they're guilty. I, man, look at Jerusalem, God. Yeah, you're right. Look at all those idols. And, and your word says, yeah, you're not supposed to have it in Leviticus. You're not supposed to have it in Deuteronomy. You're not supposed to do it in Numbers. I understand. Lord, I understand that you love them. And you're their father. And they need chastisement. I will do it, God. But I will do it on your side and not Satan's side. And Lord, I ask for blessings and mercy in, in a situation that, you know, cursing of cursing. And Lord, if you can find somebody else to do it, could you get somebody else to do it, please? But if it's me for the blessing and for the help of your people, that would be a whole different story. That would be a whole different story. You know when the Jewish people in the book of Acts were torturing and killing and imprisoning and everything they were doing to the, to, the, the, to the apostles and to the Christians, they never fought back. They just turned to God. They said, God, vengeance belongs to you. Not us. Don't mess with God's people. You know, that goes for Christians too. I didn't talk much about the church. But we are God's people. We are the children of God. You better not mess with us. Because when Paul went after the Christians and he brought Paul down to the ground, Jesus told Paul, he said, Why persecutest thou? Me. When you persecute a Christian, Jesus Christ, Scripture, takes it personally. I wouldn't mess with a Christian either. That's what the Bible says.